Why was I sitting behind a man that literally had to hide me from everybody? Only wanted to see me at night like I was a bat or something. Hey guys, welcome back, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Mackenzie. Today, we're gonna be doing some big sister advice that I wish I knew. When I tell you I had a time growing up, girl, had a time, let me tell you. Obviously first, I feel like with any sort of girl talk, you need some sort of beverage. I feel like we can kind of guess where I am right now. Like, I feel like it's quite obvious. If you're a supporter, you watch my videos, I feel like it's gonna be quite obvious where I'm about to go. I'm not gonna say it. Think it in your head. Think, think, think it in your head. Maybe you know from the setting. Duncan, what can I get for you today? Hi, can I have a medium strawberry dragon fruit refresher made with green tea? And you said strawberry refresher, right? Yes. Okay. And can I have extra strawberry in it, please? And that's it. $3.92 Alrighty, thank you. I thought we can guess where I am. Quite obvious now. No, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it, it is so fun. <laughs> thank you. You too. Before we do our little advice session, we need to do a taste test because what if the drink is like absolutely disgusting and like ruins like the whole thing? Prop star, she literally did so good. Let's get started. I had two older sisters growing up. I was not super, super close to them, nor did I get early advice to them just because I wasn't really like living in the same household going through my years. I really couldn't get that much advice face to face. Anyways, I didn't have to like raise myself, but I definitely did have to learn and go through a bunch of things that most people don't go through or most people should not have to go through. Like I really put myself through the ringer for what, at what cost? But obviously I've made it out. I barely survived. And this is my hot takes and what y'all should do and do not do. Let's start off with like body images. Body images are so important this day and time. I feel like the ages of like body dysmorphia and like people getting bullied for it is getting younger and younger. I remember at least growing up, it was like probably like 14, 15 for me, but I know like this day and time now, girls are getting bullied for their bodies at 10. Like my little sister is in fifth grade and she's telling people are getting bullied for their body at 10. Like you're turning double digits, are still playing with dolls, but you're getting bullied for your body. I think it's so insane. And for a person, trigger warning, who's went through like an eating disorder, I feel like it's just so not worth it in the long run obviously it's easier said than done but i just think it's so crazy 10 year olds are getting bullied for their bodies like it just it's so mind blowing my sister told me and i'm like are you being serious and she's like yeah like they're calling people like fat and cows and i'm like when I was 10, I was playing with American Girl dolls, not even caring what I ate. I guess it's more normalized at like an older age, but now the fact that it's pushed at 10 is literally so insane to me. Kind of like how I got over it was, I try to think of like my younger self, like four or five, poor girl went through a lot too. I try to think of that, and then when I'm like thinking like these negative thoughts, and be like, oh, you're fat, and I'm like thinking, anytime you're calling yourself fat, you're calling yourself ugly, you're not smart, you're this or that. Imagine you're telling a four-year-old that they're ugly, they're fat, they're not smart, like they're not perfect. And then it kind of like puts in perspective of like, if you're telling your younger self that, why should you tell your older self that? Obviously, once again, easier said than done. I feel like it really does take a huge mental toll on you going through one. I'm gonna be real with y'all because I wanna be a little more open in 2024. I don't wanna be like filter 24 seven. Like I owe perfect life, makeup hauls, like perfect, perfect, perfect. Because obviously no one's life is perfect. I hate to break it to some of y'all, but like no one's life's perfect. No one has everything together every single moment of the day. Like you're still going through your daily ups and downs. But I did not grow up with the most money. I still do not have the most amount of money. I don't have like millions. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. A lot of it was like single parent households and even that I went really far from life y'all. I feel like that also played into a big part of my eating disorder just because of the fact that I did not have a lot growing up so there really was hardly any food. It kind of like helped the eating disorder thrive because I mean there's no food to eat so like why eat it all? So I was like eating like she's just nice but looking back I honestly was very deathly ill. Like I'll go back and look at pictures of myself from like years ago and I'm like how was I walking around when I literally get in bones? It was very quite concerning like I went to the doctor finally and she was like I'm surprised you're walking around which I kind of like try to like joke about lightly but it literally was so serious that I almost was like this close to being hospitalized and I try to laugh it off but it really is such a serious matter that so many people like go through daily men and women and it's not talked about enough which I don't understand why obviously going at like a younger age now and I just fear for like the youth and just everybody I can't be like don't get an eating disorder it's not worth it in the long run from someone who's had one and like still recovering like it's a lot and I do 
like, really feel for like the younger generation now they're growing up getting it to be like 10 and 12. I know it's like so like cliche to be like don't listen to the haters. You really cannot listen to anybody else's opinion. I've grown up and I finally have realized that anybody who has an opinion of you negatively you know how cliche it is like they're jealous of you but most of the chance they are. They are definitely having some insecurity that's bothering them so bad they're having to push it on you. If anybody's fat shaming you, anybody's saying you're not perfect, you're this, you're worthless, blah 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 blah, they most definitely have a huge insecurity that's biting on them and the way they're expressing and trying to help them with their insecurities by bullying someone else. You know, seek help, please. I've learned that the hard way. Anybody who has a negative opinion on you, they have no healthy way of expressing it and like trying to push through it. So prayers for them, honestly. Hot take. That was our first hot take. Let's talk guys. When I tell you I was put through the absolute ringer and literally dragged the actual mud, kid y'all not y'all. Then that led me to my amazing boyfriend that I have now. It's no joke. But also I did not have to put up with any of that. Like looking back now, I'm like, why did I sit through that? Why was I sitting behind a man that literally had to hide me from everybody? Only wanted to see me at night like I was a bat or something. And I'm like thinking back now, like wish I could tell like my younger self. This is not even like younger self. It literally is like two years ago. It's not even a huge, like significantly long time ago. But I have a little sister. I love her so much. And I'm going to make sure and best believe that she does not go through any of like the stuff guy wise, friendship wise, body wise. Just gonna make sure she does not go through that same stuff that I did because it was rough for no reason. Also, I grew up with no dad. <laughs> Looking back now, I constantly question myself. Why was I sitting behind the man that had absolutely nothing going for him in life? So that's my number one advice. These guys in your 16, like 15, 17 age, I know they will find like their love early on. But most of these guys that only want to see you at nighttime, that make excuses every time you want to hang out, like it's only convenient on their schedule, 100% of those times, they don't want you. They're not playing the long route to see if you're worth it. The second they meet you, they put you in a category of like, oh, I'm going to date you. I'm and have fun with you, you know, mess around with you, play with your feelings, blah, 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 and then leave you, or I'm just not gonna have any interest in you at all. You don't automatically, like, click, he's not putting in the effort immediately, he's not worth it. There's no, I'm gonna wait around to see if he changes, because 100% of the time, take it from someone who's sat around many, many times, and waited around, seeing like, oh, he's gonna change for me, I'm so this, I'm so that, he never changes, and he's literally wasting your time, he's talking to six other girls behind your back. Let's wake up and be realistic with ourselves. Like, you know, the Dululu era, I felt like Dululu era was so old last year, it's no longer cute to be Delulu. If he wants to wife you up, if he wants to put you in his life for the rest of his life, he's not gonna sit around and let someone else do that. That's the most important advice I've ever learned with a guy. He's not gonna like sit around weeks and days and be like, oh, should I text her? He's not gonna do that. He just does not like you. Hot take, hot take. He does not like you if he's gonna sit around and like wait months, years. Like no guy is gonna sit around for years and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna date you. It could take you a year to find out that you're not compatible with someone. Yeah, sure, go ahead. But it does not take someone a whole year to be like, yeah, I'm ready to date her. Speaking on that, if a guy is in a relationship, someone else, two years plus, and then he like gets out of it, and you're thinking he's gonna want to date you, you are stupid as they come. And no guy, unless he is like a loyal man, which are so hard to come across this day and time, he is not gonna want to get a relationship and then immediately be like, yep, here's my wife. Unless you're, what's his name? Ashton Kutcher. What's his name? Ashton Butcher? Whatever his name is. This guy right here, when he not proposed to Vanessa Hudgens and then proposed to his next girlfriend immediately, unless you're him. Like, that's like our slight, really slim chance, but he's just stupid stupid for that. Nessa, queen herself, no guy is gonna sit around and wait for this. Blah, 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 blah. So I wish I could tell my younger self and I will tell my little sister, do not sit around and let these little boys toy around with your heart because it's not worth it in the long run. The only person you're getting hurt is you because he is emotionally not in... <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hold that one in. He is not emotionally invested in you like you are invested in him. So if I could tell my little younger self two years ago, Kenzie, something, I'd tell her, quit messing with these boys that don't care about you. Kids you not, y'all, I could have saved so much time, so much heartbreak, so much energy on my life in doing something good for life. I could have been out volunteering in a soup kitchen, but now I'm over here getting dragged by some little twig that is bullying me. I could have been putting my energy and like my time and effort in something else that could have been like really actually benefiting me in life. I'm sitting behind someone and backing this man up who does not care about me and it's embarrassing that's another thing i think being delusional is also now becoming embarrassing i think that's my new hot take we are women we do not need to sit around for no man and wait for him to come into our lives or like wait for him to change because why are we doing that like think about it unless that bank account of his is pushing over a million we shouldn't have to think about this too hard hot take don't sit around don't waste your time please and thank you the great guy will always come around my grandma always told me the spice she was like kenzie like don't sit around for no guy he'll come to you when it's needed 
it. Don't look for anyone. He'll come to me. And I'm like, be frail, granny. <laughs> like, girl. Because I'm also thinking, like, she's, like, in this generation where, like, y'all are getting married at, like, 13. Like, I was like, why am I listening to this advice? Until it actually happened to me, and now I'm actually happy in a relationship. Ever been in one? I actually have a guy that wants to see me, puts effort to see me, gets me flowers, holds my door open for me. When I was not looking for a guy, I was looking for a gym membership to get over being depressed. And I found this. I was not looking, and it just comes to you. No matter how cliche and how overused that advice is, but you know, don't look and they'll come for you. Take it from a person herself who is not looking whatsoever. He like fell into my lap. God was like, she's been through enough. Like, let's give her a break. Here's perfect angel boyfriend ever. Let's talk friendships. I don't really know the word to describe it, but I feel like friendships are so crazy. Like this day and age, I feel like there's so much bickering. There's back and forth. There's backstabbing. My biggest advice, and I wish I could tell my like little middle school self is who wanted to have a bazillion, gazillion, like 11 person sleepovers. Like, I think it was like validation because I never got validated by a parent heavy on it. Um, I never had really a parent figure to, like, validate me, so I'm like, let's get friends and, you know, they'll validate me. My hot take on the friendships is, I feel like I'm using so many cliche terms, like, keeping the circle small has probably been the best advice I could ever give myself. I really do think keeping it small is the way to go. Whenever I had big groups, I was never fully satisfied. I was always looking for more, and then when someone would ignore me, I feel like it affected my mood so much, which is another thing. Never let your mood rely on someone else. That's, like, the biggest thing I can give you. Never let your happiness or your mood rely on someone else so heavy on it i cannot tell you the amount of time i or girl that i rely my happiness on and if they weren't responding they weren't like texting me. i'd be depressed the whole day i would not get out of bed the whole day and then as soon as they did it was quite embarrassing actually because like they're living their life and i was not i was literally like sitting around waiting for a text back waiting for this and that and they're living their life they're out doing stuff and i'm sitting here waiting and like, putting my life on pause for this person and they could care less never let your happiness your mood anything rely on someone else let it rely on you you need to learn to be happy i yourself or no one's gonna want to be happy with you if they will see that someone's like depending on them 24 7 they're not gonna want to be with you they're gonna be like why do i want this leech on my back they're gonna give you as a parasite as a tick they're not gonna want to be your friend they're not gonna want to date you they're not gonna want to blah, blah 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 because they're like oh she's depending on me i can do whatever i want because i have so much control over this person now update back to friendships i think it's so important to find like your two three friends and stick with them keeping your circle so small and i mean you could honestly thrive in a big friend group i just never have maybe it's me problem I don't know. I have never actually thrived on a friend group. I've never thrived in a trio. I feel like it never... Trios don't work. Hot take. There's always the best friends in the trio, and then there's like that one person. Proven fact. My grandma has preached to me, trios never work, and I mean, I've seen it happen years ago. Trios don't work. If your friend does not want to put the effort into you, they don't want to support you, if you're doing something like good in your life, or like going for someone, and they're like always hating on you, or they always have something to say about some action you do that's not helpful or positive, in a way they are out to get you i don't know what it is about me but i've figured out that some people would like never there's gonna be a friend in your life that never has the best intentions for you tear you down they're gonna want to make you do bad choices they want to see you fail in life without telling you they're gonna make you do all these things it's not you you're doing bad and then they're up on life and they're like ha 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 look who's doing better than who stay away from those kind of people i know it's so hard to figure out who it is think about a friend you have in your life right now do they support you yes or no if you answered no cut them off <laughs> bye I feel like every year we always like it's new year new me but why are we sitting around friends that literally have like no positive impact on your life? Why are we staying true to them? Why are we backing them up? Heavy on it. Family does not like the friend. Don't take it personal. Just cut them off. Simple as that. Like don't even think about it. Like don't be like, should I? I want to see it through. Never see it through. Anybody in family is like, yeah, I don't like that friend. If they're a reliable source, if it's like some like person that you don't even like in your family and they're like, mm, I don't like it. Maybe think it out. If someone who is like actually reliable has like good advice, has your good intention for you and they're like, I don't like this person. Snip snip. That's simple. All it is to it. I would listen to that advice when someone was like, I don't think that's a good friend for you. I could have saved myself so much back and forth, so much fighting, so much happiness, time and effort. Y'all know the gist. If I would have just listened when someone was like, that's not a good friend for you. Hot take. I feel like these aren't even like hot takes. I feel like this is like common advice that anybody should be taking. I wish I was taking. I think that is it for my advice video for my little first ever girl talk. I feel like we do girl talks, but they are personal experiences. If y'all want like personal experiences and how I look at the situation and flip the narrative, 
active and like actually got back on my feet. Like if y'all want to see how I literally got dragged, how do I spray this? I can beat up. If y'all want to see how I literally took a situation where a friend was posting about me and like wouldn't tell me until someone else told me and act like they weren't the person bullying me and how I flipped that and became like a better version of myself, let me know. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you're new to my channel, you definitely subscribe down below. I, I don't do videos just like this. I do a bunch of like skincare, makeup, hauls. I have a bunch of exciting content coming this month and I would love for y'all to join our little family. Anyways, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Hey.